in the media conference with Lal Goyal, which is brought to you by V4 News, Global TV, V4 Stream, Malnadu TV, News Gaon Se, Samvad Sarokar News, Organ Donation India Foundation and Gyan. Our endeavor is to enlighten you with the current topics. And today, our topic is role of youth in youth empowerment. But before that, I would like to inform you that today uh, we are going to witness a unique thing and that is called the Great Conjunction. The year 2020 will end with a special astronomical event, the closest Great Conjunction of Jupiter and Saturn in 397 years. On December 21, the two planets will almost touch in the sky. The most recent great conjunction occurred on 31st May 20, 2000, and the next will occur on 21st December 2020, that is today. Generally speaking, a conjunction is when two objects appear close to each other in the sky. A conjunction of Jupiter and Saturn, which only happens about once every 20 years, is called a great conjunction. In the technical language of astronomers, there are a number of ways to define a conjunction. One way is to say it is the moment of minimum separation between two objects as viewed from the Earth. By this definition, the 2020 great conjunction of Jupiter and Saturn will occur on December 21st. During the 2020 great conjunction, the two planets will be separated in the sky by a minimum of six arc min minutes the closest separation between the two planets since 1623. As Jupiter and Saturn will rendezvous just a few days before Christmas forming, what will look like a single bright object in the sky, the 2020 Great Conjunction is sometimes also called the Christmas star or Bethlehem star. In India, the conjunction is likely to be visible between 6.30 and 7.30 p.m., to see the great conjunction, look towards the southwest after sunset. Find a spot with unobstructed view of the sky, such a, as a field or park, said NASA. So if you want to witness this uh, spectacular moment, after the sunset view, look towards the southwest and watch this memorable uh, conjunction, great conjunction. Now coming to our main topic, that is the role of youth in youth empowerment. Youth voices matters because they are the only way to rectify the injustices that young people have suffered and continue to suffer due to being excluded in decision making. It is through these voices that they can become fully empowered to become leaders in their own right. Youth empowerment is a process where children and young people are encouraged to take charge of their lives. They do this by addressing their situation and then take action in order to improve their access to resource and transform their consciousness through their beliefs, values, and attitudes. Youth empowerment aims to improve quality of life. Youth empowerment is achieved through participation in youth empowerment programs. However, scholars argue that children's rights implementation should go beyond learning about formal rights and processes to give birth to a concrete experience of rights. There are numerous models that youth empowerment programs use that help youth achieve empowerment. A variety of youth empowerment Initiatives are underway around the world. These programs can be through non-profit organizations, government organizations, school or private organizations. Youth empowerment is different from youth development because development is centered on developing individuals while empowerment is focused on creating greater community change relies on the development of individual capacity. Empowerment movements including youth empowerment originate, gain momentum, become viable and become 
institutionalized. Youth empowerment is often addressed as a gateway to intergenerational equity, civic engagement and democracy building. Youth empowerment examines six interdependent dimensions, psychological, community, organizational, economic, social, and cultural. Youth empowerment programs are aimed at creating healthier and higher qualities of life for underprivileged or at risk youth. Over the last two decades, quality of life, QOL, has emerged as an important unit of measurement to evaluate the success of empowerment programs. Youth empowerment programs thrive in positive developmental settings. Positive developmental settings promote youth competence, confidence, and connections. There are various types of empowerment programs across the globe that empower youth through many different tactics and programs. Programs can operate in a variety of settings. The majority of programs operate in more than one setting, which may be a key factor in their success. The beneficial outcomes to youth empowerment programs are improved social skills, improved behavior, increased academic achievement, increased self-esteem, and increased self-efficiency. Around the globe, there are various empowerment programs focused on a wide variety of things. When youth participate in established empowerment programs, they see a variety of benefits. The practices of youth involvement and empowerment become embedded with the organizational, cultural, and community culture. The United Nations also acknowledged that the energies of the youth need to be enhanced effectively in a productive manner. In India too, we have the national youth policy that has been designed to effectively address the problems faced by our youth and the related solutions. This policy expresses the vision the country has for our youth. It also identifies objectives and priorities areas that are addressed and considered extremely important by the government. The five objectives of the national youth policies are to create a great workforce that can work for the betterment of the country and can make a sustainable contribution for the country's development. The priority areas for this objective is education, entrepreneurship, employment, and skill development. To develop a strong and healthy generation that is equipped to take on future challenges, promotion of community service, civic engagement in all stages of governance to support youth at risk and create equal opportunity for all disadvantaged and marginalized youth. Youth is responsible to build the nation, to make the society good and noble. Youth can improve the community and culture of society. In India, we need responsible youth. And to discuss this important topic that is the role of youth in youth empowerment we have a uh, um, seven eight youth with us but first of all i would like to invite my chief guest and my chief guest of our program today is mr rakesh kumar jha mr rakesh kumar jha is the civil services coach he is the managing director of Discourse Academy Delhi. He motivates and gives interview guidance to UPSC aspirants. He is visiting faculty of political science, general studies, and English language at different reputed institutes. He is doing talk shows for All India Radio, Akashwani, New Delhi. He is called upon by various media organizations to participate as an expert for their live shows on various national and international issues. He conducted and moderated several seminars, including national seminar in the World Book Fair 2016 New Delhi by National Book Trust, Government of India. He has published several books and written articles in reputed publications. 
is co co-author of india mauritius bilateral relationship recent initiative uh, welcome uh, mr rakesh kumar jha on our show mr rakesh kumar jha today the topic is you role of youth in youth empowerment and you are dealing with youth you are coaching them you are uh, uh, giving them the inspiration motivating them and preparing them for the interview of the upsc the civil services exams so we would like to know your views on role of youth in youth empowerment mr rakesh kumar jha please yeah good morning to everyone and uh, particularly dr lal goel sahab and uh, i am seeing mr syande manjuta au aval job and uh, it's uh, sri syande sahab sri harsa i welcome all of you to this show because dr goel sahab have been doing all time great great you know shows all the time today you know the topic as youth empowerment yes definitely i have been talking interacting and uh, doing a lot of works with the youth particularly for civil services examination which i feel that it's a very prestigious job among the budding youth of this country that's very true and uh, as i have especially prepared a good note for all of you that what do you mean by empowerment if i say that the youth must be empowered it means what that the youth must have some skill and you should there is a slight difference between the personal development and the empowerment suppose if i say if you want to develop yourself it means that you are an individual that you want to develop but if i say that the youth must be developed so it feels a kind of community feeling community feeling means any society who can have different strata and if they can come together for a particular reason for a particular cause then it is known as empowerment if someone wants to empower himself or herself he or must should have a particular coordination a lot of projects are running across the globe whether it is in usa or in other countries they have a lot of programs and policies what is the very much difficult in our country the people of this country or the youth particularly i am saying that the, they are not focusing on a particular thing that okay if we are with we should not only concentrate to a particular thing that uh, we want to do preparation for civil services examination or any technical examination that is there but i must remember you that during our national movement there were so many our leaders particularly you the national leaders they were not only studying the things rather they were taking the participation take an example of gandhi take an example of subhash chand bose take an example of bal gangadhar tilak when tilak was there he wanted to have a lot of like ganesh puja and lot of activities he started Uh, one newspaper also in mumbai and maharashtra in marathi language i mean to say the today is the biggest challenge for the youth is that you should also concentrate for the community mobilization here i have especially come uh, come for the kind of requesting all of you that just come for a community mobilization suppose a cultural mobilization is there a political mobilization is there economic mobilization i mean god has given a particular kinds of uh, you know particular kinds of trait in every one's life you have to just excel those things you have to just polish those, those things and accordingly you have to create suppose i uh, cite an example that why should not we should we all together today i am seeing that you know five five six uh, youth are there we can uh, start a book club re reading habit yesterday i was discussing one of the very renowned person that the today's youth are not focusing on reading habit what is the problem i mean that technology is there there are a lot of books available in the market but why you are not have you ever studied that the what are the challenges after 10 years have you studied that the what is artificial intelligence all the economy is going to shift on artificial intelligence if the youth are not empowered if the youth are not skilled with the ai that is known as artificial intelligence i am sorry most of the youth will be employed or unemployed that's the point that how you can have your kind of skill and a skill can be attained through only good networking today with the help of technology we are sitting different parts of the country i am very thankful to honorable goel sahab that he has given this opportunity to interact all of you because you know technology can be taken as a grace of the god and through this technology we can have a kind of thing i am blessed to have a meeting with the honorable 
नोबल लॉरेट के अलास सत्यार्थी एट आकाशवाणी ऑल इंडिया रेडियो इन दिल्ली ही कैटेगरीली सेड देन व्हेन ही वाज स्टूडेंट ही डिड हैव अ लॉट ऑफ डिफिकल्टीज इन आवर सोसाइटी सो अकॉर्डिंग टू दैट ही जस्ट स्टार्टेड अ काइंड ऑफ मूवमेंट नॉट फ्रॉम ओनली इंडिया अक्रॉस द वर्ल्ड एंड इवन वन वन गर्ल फ्रॉम पाकिस्तान मलाला शी वाज आल्सो द यंगेस्ट नोबल लॉरेट इन दिस कंट्री व्हाट इज द पॉइंट द पॉइंट इज दैट like fatima is there so fatima is there you know a lot of can can do the things in a positive way that is the most important factor that if you have a particular determination if you know that okay why should uh, it is the tradition of the our culture government is not doing anything what is the government government has to maintain some law and order foreign policy other things all things cannot do the government because the resources are very limited the tax payers are very limited we have a lot of demographic dividend and demographic burden so we have a lot of demographic burden we are not demographic but, uh, you know dividend so that is the point what i am saying uh, i am requesting all of you that please read good books because the idea comes through good books when you read a book it does mean that you are gaining some idea what will ha- happen after 10 years suppose under 30 years or you have started your thinking around 14 or 15 what you will do after 10 years what you will do after 5 years the short term and the long term you should have a particular goal and that goal can be achieved with the mentorship with the networking with the good uh, community feeling we all are indians and a part or we all are human beings so what we can do that we can have a great networking and that networking can be easily accessible one illusion is also goel saab in today's world that technology can do everything in this world no man sorry technology if technology can do if google can do anything then what is the need of recruitment then why upsc is recruiting all time 1000 ias and ips and ifs people why the companies are uh, hiring the people i mean to say that it is you if the budding youth of this country can do miracle change and you know the skill india program is there government have a lot of team in this startup program startup stand up programs are there people are doing great great things in this country i am uh, citing one example that a lot of people have quit their jobs and they started their own startup programs what is the uh, no a panacea among them that is the ignition point that you know and that is why dr kalam in his book india you know wings of fire he had written one thing that we have a multi talented youth you should come together you should uh, have a lot of uh, uh, things can do that and particularly you have to pinpoint that what i can do should i go for a particular cause and not only concentrate on a particular study that okay i am an engineer i am a doctor i want to become an ias no there are lots of ias officers and you know? this is what i have to share with all of you one more thing i want to say uh, that it is the knowledge throughout the human civilization sir it is the knowledge through knowledge only you can navigate you can uh, face the challenges across the world in personal life in the social life and empowerment not only the cultural empowerment you should have political empowerment you should have economic the economic empowerment well sir is the ma- major challenge among all the developing countries whether it is the asian countries or the african countries because the youth are getting knowledge youth are getting degrees youth are getting everything but they are not directly related to the economy so after getting your particular skill you should have a particular kind of thing so that you can have a better life better understanding and the personal feeling and if you are filled with your job with your everything then definitely you have a lot of changes in across the world and more ever one more thing that i want to share with all my panelists all my youth and especially uh, like uh, girl uh, fatima is there so uh, i mean that everyone should go for a good cause good things read good books imbibe those things and it is the books who gives you the birth it is the books you know when mahatma gandhi was in london he visited a lot of libraries he visited a lot of institutions he visited even church mosque everywhere he wanted to go so that you can learn so empirical study empirical knowledge is all 
very much necessary. You should not only focus on a particular thing. And one more thing, the scientific temperament. I request all of you that you should come for a scientific temperament because India needs scientists across the Israel is a very small country. Japan is a very small country. South Korea is a very small country. What is the, I mean, what is the uh, secret of success behind them? The secret of success is that they are very much committed with their nationalistic values. They are very much committed within 40 years and you, most of the Nobel laureates are coming from Israel. What is the point? Because they are very much focused on the war. So we should have a balance like uh, I call a study also the talent management, sir. Well, Sahab, we should have a talent management uh, uh, cell because India is a full of potential. The largest youth are in our country across the world. So we should have a talent management skill system so that we can take out the talent and we can polish them, we can nurture them. And I say you that, you know, I have very limited uh, time because girls have, have restricted me that you should have a, a 10 minutes only time. You know, this, this is a book. I have written this book, India Mauritius Relation. And my author is uh, High Commissioner of Mauritius. What he told, why I have quoted this, sir? Just you allow, sir, can I speak two minutes, sir? Yeah, yeah, please go ahead. So, what I have to say is that uh, Mr. Jagdishwar Govardhan, who is the High Commissioner of Mauritius along with other countries, he is looking after five countries. He said the Mauritius was a very rural country in the 60s and 70s. It was uh, the leadership, it was the youth who took the initiative, like the tourism was there, health tourism was there, a lot of things. And can you imagine that the, through Mauritius, India is getting maximum FDI. And that is the beauty of a small country, that how a ruler country, how a ruler economy had changed from different, different means. It is not necessarily that you should have an industrial kinds of thing. It is not necessarily that you have a, whatever the best thing inside you or resources, I mean, intellect resources or the natural resources, so that you can say. What I have to say that these all things you can, you can uh, do the things in a particular way. And I can assure you that a lot of books, even in my life, I am not, you know, no. What I do, that a lot of books I have come with these things and I have written all these books for all of you. And these all books I have written from my side. So what I have to say, just to ignite your mind and brain, that it is you who can take up this initiative. And once again, I request all of you that please be motivated and have good books with you, good health, and then take up forward. And whatever the things, I am ready to help. I am ready to help without taking any single penny. Let's come to us. Let's come through the route because youth are not connecting. Do not go for only social things, Facebook and Twitter. I am not against it. But you have to pinpoint. It is the opportunity. The God has given the opportunity that the Goel Sahib has conducted. So you have to tap this opportunity that, okay, and I am ready to guide every student, every youth across the world, across the globe, so that our India would be developed. And whatever the best thing you have, you have to just take out and any question, any queries as we uh, Goel sir will allow to us then we'll speak and then please you also tell me sir. Yes, sir. Thank you, yes, sir. Thank you very much uh, Mr. Rakesh Jha for sir, giving sir. your uh, very powerful motivational uh, uh, thoughts and I'm sure the, with your thoughts uh, these youth have definitely been enlightened and what Mr. Rakesh Jha has emphasized that there, there is a difference between development and the empowerment and and that's why because if you are developed you will be developing yourself an individual but if you are empowered you are you are going to give the benefit for the community so basically it's a community at development and that is only possible if the youths are, are empowered and for that he says the two three things he has highlighted one is that uh, the uh, reading the books uh, which have now days uh, because every the youth according to mr jha is busy both basically in the social media but he says if you use the social media properly if you study read the books earlier the books you have to go to the libraries and this but now if it is if it is available on even your uh, on your social media you must read the books try to increase your knowledge knowledge is the main thing and knowledge can will not gain by getting only one side thing if you are doing whatsoever you are doing try to have 
knowledge from all different angles. He has given the example of Mahatma Gandhi, ki when he visited uh, UK, London, he wanted to wo give, watch or went to want to see, visit mosques, church, temples, whatnot, and libraries because he want to see what is happening. And that is the reality. And he has also mentioned his experience with Mr. Kailash uh, Satyarthi, who was the Nobel laureate of India and uh, uh, the Malala of Pakistan, who has, uh, they, they, they worked for the youth. And that is what, unless you people, the youth will not come forward with a total determination that if we, you are empowered, you can uh, change the entire Sindhu and uh, entire world. And he has also mentioned about the freedom struggle, ki how the youth of that time, uh, Mahatma Gandhi, Subhash Chandra Bose, uh, Bal Ganga Tilak, Tilak, et cetera, how they have changed the country by using the empowerment, youth empowerment. And that is what required today in our youth. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Rakesh Kumar Jha for giving your uh, such a motivational uh, thoughts. And I'm sure our youths who are attending and who are viewing and who are going to watch it afterwards also, will, I'm going to be benefited. And one more thing, uh, what uh, uh, Mr. Rakesh Kumar Jha said, he is ready, he's open to guide you all, anyone who are attending the program or even you are not attending the program, you are free to uh, contact him. If you want his number, you can contact either the Global TV or to me. We will be happy to share his number to you. And, uh, and then you can contact him, talk to him, take the guidance. But it should be for the positiveness. Uh, we, we believe that if you, you all will be empowered, then the, definitely our country, which Mr. Rakesh has said, will definitely be the global leader. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Rakesh Kumar Jha. Now I would like to invite my youth leader, but before that uh, I would like, because I think uh, the youths are still going and coming, they're having the net, net problems. Be the change that you wish to see in the world, said Mahatma Gandhi. Now my first youth guest is Mr. Abel Job. Mr. Abel Job is in third semester School of Planning and Architecture, Bhopal. Uh, Mr. Abel Job, you have heard uh, you have you have heard what Mr. Uh, our chief guest, Mr. Rakesh Kumar Jha, has spoken. Now, he, we would like to know from you the role of youth in ro youth empowerment, Mr. Abel Job, please. Uh, first of all, good morning to one and all. Uh, thank you, Mr. Goyal, for giving me this opportunity to speak. And it's a pleasure to speak in the same platform as with Rakesh, sir. So uh, first of all, uh, I would like to begin with a quote by Franklin D. Roosevelt that states that we cannot build the future for our, we cannot always build the future for our youth, but we can build our youth for the future. We all know that youth of today are tomorrow's leaders, innovators, creators, and builders. India is one of the youngest nations in the world with more than 50% of its total population belonging to the age of under 25 years. And this gives us a certain edge over other countries. But for the youth to be empowered, their needs must be met, like food, water, sanitation, and a place to stay are like basic necessities that we require. But what our country lacks is the fact that there is no equality in the case of education. And through education alone, can a young generation reach to its actual potential. So I'm referring to an example for the ease of understanding. Okay, so consider a young mind, a boy or a girl who just finishes schooling and wishes to go to a college. So uh, he or she does, does not have enough financial background to aid his or her education. So uh, he or she goes to a bank to get an educational loan, but the bank is not ready to roll its dice because of there is no collateral. So everyone cannot attain scholarships, right? Uh, this is a flaw that I see in the system. So uh, there should be no collateral for educational loans for people who wishes for education, but does not possess anything to pledge. The security should be solely based on professional courses and their caliber. So, and the caste system nowadays requires an update as well, because it should be based on income rather than race or culture. There are many people belonging to the highest of caste, but 
Still, their family struggled for a day's meal. India, being a democratic nation and the largest democracy in the world, lacks the resources to treat its future young equally. So the rise in po population is kind of the major reason behind the lack of available opportunities, which leads to poverty, malnutrition, corruption, violence, and unemployment. So what I say is that allied minds can only understand each other. Hence, the young generation plays a major role uh, towards uplifting each other belonging to the same generation. Young mindsets are innovative, uh, which helps in the progress of our nation. And to say each generation has its own needs and it takes a great amount of time to value, respect the different generations, their needs, their views, their ideologies and much more. So opportunity should be given to the youth to represent their ideas and the policies for the future of our nation. So the only way through which ideas can be shared and policies to be amended is through politics itself. The, to be honest, the present leaders are trying their best to keep up with our needs, but needless to say, they are falling behind by miles. So we should take part in politics and try to occupy high positions in our governing bodies. And uh, we are the majority. And when we stick together, we know what ends we go to achieve justice. So so does the governing body. So it's our responsibility now not to be pawns anymore and be knights and move in one direction, taking away all the hurdles and obstructions in our path and standing united for a noble cause. So by that, we empower ourselves and we process information day by day. So we are the future of the nation. So from now, we have to take actions and violence is never an answer, but unity is. So if we pay the way for our upcoming generations, we can see the changes that could make India a superpower nation. And when I say superpower nation, I do not refer in terms of weapons or strength in army or nuclear warheads, but in terms of the valuable, the most valuable asset in the whole world, and that is the youth. Okay. Thank you, sir. Uh, th thank you very much, uh, Mr. Job. You have raised two points. First point, you have raised about the population. And the second point you say is the in the youth's uh, role in the politics. See, as far as the population is concerned, if you say that because of the population, the corruption is there, uh, the poverty is there, unemployment is there, so you can see the very uh, live example next door to you is the China. China is having more population than us. Yes, up to 1980s, they were very um, having poverty, they were not developed. But today, see the China, they're the super most power in the world because of their youth, because the youth have empowered themselves. And the once the youth, as our chief guest has mentioned, empowered, the community empowered. The community empowered means the nation empowered. And that is why today, so why not we, you, the youth of India, why not they, why they just give the excuse about the population they must see towards the China. Secondly, the population is in your hand, nobody else's hand. So if the youth will decide that, no, we will not increase our population, so the population will not increase. So to give the, the excuse, take the excuse, is not the right way. Secondly, you said about the politics. Although you have given the answer yourself, you said that we must participate more. Yes, until unless youth, youth will not participate, they will not come forward then definitely the older generation is quite happy to rule the country and rule youth. So if you want to come, you all have to be united and come forward and rule the country, make policies which are beneficial, not only for youth, for everyone and thus for the country. Thank you very much, Mr. Job, for giving your views. Now I would like to uh, move to my next youth guest. I will just see whether she has joined or she is there, Ms. Fatima Muskan. Ms. Fatima Muskan, you are there. Please unmute yourself. Ms. Fatima Muskan is third yes, year. Yes, I am. Okay. Ms. Fatima Muskan is third year BA uh, student of Alwas College, Moor Bidri. Uh, Ms. Fatima, you have heard of what our chief guest, uh, Mr. Rakesh Kumar Jha, and our your earlier panelist has spoken. Now we would like to know from you the role of youth in youth empowerment. Ms. Fatima <coughs> Muskan, please. Okay, uh, good morning to everyone. And I am Fatima Muskan, as you guys know. Uh, I'd like to go more about the psychological aspects for youth empowerment. I would, uh, because I have heard two people speaking, they've spoken a lot and yeah, 
all the points were relevant so now i'd like to put more light into the psychological aspects i feel that uh, actually according to the um, surveys we see that every year 8 lakh people die by suicide and in that 1 lakh 35000 people are from india and that is the 17% of the total suicide rate which also implies that india is the 17.3% of the whole population of the world so you can imagine that so many people are commit committing suicide in india and the major age group that is committing suicide is the youth from 15 to 35 they are the ones facing a lot of problems and they are committing suicide but we need to know what are the reasons the reasons unemployment reasons can be illiteracy reason can be a uh, mental illness or uh, abuse at home sexual abuse domestic violence anything so these are problems that are going unaddressed so as a psychology student i think we lost uh, the connection of miss fatima muskan um, so we will come back to you miss fatima once you will connect properly we, i will take you in the last once uh, we will go because uh, we have to uh, go to the next guest and my next youth guest is uh, mr gracious uh disuza he is works in content seo and design for influence cell dg labs a performance marketing agency at bangalore uh, mr gracious disuza you have heard our chief guest mr rakesh yep i did i did uh, kumar jha you have heard the earlier panelist now you would like to know from you the role of youth uh, in youth empowerment mr gracious disuza please yeah so i completely agree with you goel sir like you said we've been making too many excuses you know blaming the government blaming you know a lot of things where actually in the world of internet and world of information i think opportunity is endless and i think we all should agree on that one point of view so what i feel is but the youth has made massive strides over the past few years because if you look at the workspace for example right now like before everyone used to go by experience someone who is 7 years of experience and then is much better than someone who has 5 and someone who has 5 is much better than someone who has 3 but i think that's completely changed like these days because the ease of what it takes to learn a new skill now as compared to what our parents were going through now if you get a bunch of young kids into a room and give them a problem they're going to come up with a solution straight up and a lot of companies know this and they have recognized this and that's why they have invested a lot in getting younger people into the company it's no longer getting them in the form of training or exposure or stuff like that but just to understand their perspective of things and make sure that they are contributing to the growth of the company as well and it's not just a long term goal which shows that the youth has made massive strides over the years when it's come to you know developing themselves but one thing i think all the youth has the youth still lacks is the fact that their ability to act on things like i think uh we have we have shown that we are capable of thinking right we are capable of thinking beyond our age and we are also capable of solving problems our older generations haven't been able to and that's why a lot of us have termed us as probably the smartest generation right now and but i think we are also the laziest generation by far so i think uh the reason is because uh we do not act upon you know the things we say even though you know we say some of the smartest things so i think if there's something the youth has to start doing it's that and i think that is the empowering part is supporting each other in taking action rather than and i think that's something uh we see in the arts field so people who take up music and art and when they take up those things you see their peers supporting them and you see like how they are also more empowered to come out and you know put themselves out on social media with a lot of music videos and stuff which is actually a very very difficult thing to do to expose yourself to the world but you can see it's possible because the peer group is supporting them and similarly i feel like in every other discipline if this practice follows if we support our peers so what i can say is maybe that's what we should all be looking at so let's say tomorrow my friend wants to start a business and i can speak to him and i know right i'm i should be ready not just to tell him it's a good idea but you know in case he needs some help to start it to help him or in case or also like a week from now if in case he hasn't started it i should be able to text him and be like hey i see that you haven't started it why haven't you started it so i think that's what uh the youth has to do i think we have a lot of great ideas 
uh, we, have, we are responsible for some of the biggest movements in recent history. If you look at the LGBTQ, if you look at so many of the most successful movements, the climate change, Greta Thunberg, it's all the youth, which shows that the youth has made massive strides. But the, it is also true that it's not our full potential. Like we're capable of so much more. And instead of just, you know, saying stuff and being like, okay, let's do this. These are the ideas I have. I think we should start acting on it. So, you know, draft plans, start slow, get into the loop. And then as soon as that happens, I think there's mass, there's much more potential for change. And I think the best way to assess this or something that I follow is every couple of months, I check, look at the progress I have made from two months before to two months after. And you see a particular amount of progress. And if you think about how you can accelerate that progress, what books can you read? What courses can you do? What skills can you learn? Maybe you, it could be as simple as waking up one more hour early in the morning. So when you assess these changes and you carry it forward and you know you grow as yourself and you help the other peers around you grow, I think I think there's gonna be much more development than you know. So I think where the youth right now is lacking is in terms of action and not in terms of ideation. So I think if we can empower each other in terms of action, I think that would be a great move. Yeah. Okay. I, I thank, think that's all thank, I have to say. Thank you, Mr. Gracious D'Souza for giving your views. Uh, but you have made one point and you say that the youth is having lots of ideas and that's why the uh, if you give any problem, they can solve. Everything is very good. But then tell me, Mr. Gracious D'Souza, why the employ unemployed uh, meant a rate is increasing day by day. Why so many youths are unemployed in India? Uh, because the reason is very clear that you have the, the youth have the ideas, youth wants to do, but they always classified the work. They consider few things, they consider that work is good, I will only do that work, I will not do that work. So once you start choosing your work and you will be classifying that this work is not meant for you, then definitely the unemployment will be there. Because if you initially, as our chief guest has mentioned, that you have to learn everything. If a youth feel, okay, no, this work, even if he is not a, uh, uh, if he is uh, not been the, he is interested to become a painter, but if he sees that today he's not getting that chance, if he's getting a chance to do some clerical work, he says, no, this is not suitable for me. Or if a youth is unemployed and if he has to drive an auto rickshaw or a car or a cab, he says, no, this is not, I'm not going to do. That's the reason in India, the unemployment is increasing. You see other countries, their youth, they are qualified doctors, they are qualified engineers, they are working, but they are also driving the cab. They are also working somewhere in the bar. They are also working in a petrol pump. I am talking of youth. They are they are studying in whichever field, but they want to. That is the the spirit from them from the youth young age. They want to be self dependent. The self respect, the self esteem, what they have, which is not there. I I take the blame on our older generation that we pamper the youth. We say, oh no no no, this is not of your age. Don't why you are doing it's your age of uh, enjoy. Uh, read and uh, this thing but the fault lies with us but the youth should realize they should not be pampered by the family they must start thinking of earning themselves by doing any work then never consider that this work is below the dignity the day you will start doing all those works the day the, the, there will be no unemployment and that is what India requires thank you very much uh, Mr. Gracious D'Souza thank you Mr. Gover uh, for your uh, views now I would like to move to my next guest and he is Mr. Manjunath AU. Mr. Manjunath AU is the manager projects Selco Solar Bangalore. Mr. Manjunath, uh, you have heard uh, the chief guest and your earlier panelist. Now we would like to know from you the role of youth in youth empowerment. Mr. Manjunath AU, please. Yeah, thank you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Boyle, sir, for the opportunity. See, for all the panelists, like uh, uh, as a as an individual, what I say is like what uh, Rakesh sir is said is like it is not about the individual, it is about the community development need, need to be started. But what I feel is like first we need to develop, then only we can develop someone or some the community. See, uh, even when I see from my college days when I started my career, I've seen a lot of ups and downs. So we need to 
uh, start thinking about what we are doing what it is actually needed for me i am do i am learning something from this pro- this job or this particular task or what i have learned in the college is is it okay or what are the differentiation we are happening uh, having in the career field so this is the main point like we need to think like each task what is what we have assigned is it any giving worthful and is it what will be the for the 10 years so that is one point the other thing is like moreover we should focus on better than yesterday so fine we do mistakes so we do uh, some achievements so youth are in the sense we can we have enormous energy we just think the ideas we need to put it in the dig but as uh, gracia said we have the ideas but it need to be nurtured or it will be come to a conclusion we just do a draft copy for the proposal or for any other thing but it needs to be uh, uh, i mean completed by our seniors see more over my seniors what they say is like okay you, you, they just uh, pinch it off like so these are the points you need to just change it off and this project will be done so these are the things we need from our elders and more over like what recently goal uh, sir said is like so whatever the job we do of course we should be proud of that whatever the job we are doing see because like we need to, we need to be independent and we need to think oh this is right this is wrong so and we will be in our own life accountant travel agent everything will be in our life because no one wants to come and do for us so in that scenario we need to think each and every spec uh, step what we are doing what is that actually for a particular point we need to think of so this is how we going to develop individually if we develop individually so we'll definitely come up with a plan and we'll solve all the community problems see moreover like when youth when youth are in the uh, project or in, in any uh, job role so they want to change the ring see if you are if the older generation is taking lot of time and we need to shorten the time so that the value time can be utilized so this is the main motto of our youth so and we can easily solve all the, all the problems so this is my point sir okay thank you very much mr manjunath and mr manjunath you have made a point about the uh, the development and the empowerment and you say the first we should develop ourselves then only we will be able to develop the community yes you are right but you have to understand there is a very fine thin line of the difference between development and empowerment development means when you are totally self centered or selfish you are thinking about yourself only suppose you are studying and you are studying and you are thinking about you but if you know that one of the your classmate is weak in a particular subject and which you know better if you just give half an hour one hour time and guide that that is called empowerment empowerment doesn't mean that you are not going to be developed you are developing yourself but try to do something for others like you have also you you only mentioned about that seniors were guiding why seniors were guiding that is the community that is the empowerment like you are working in a organization today there might be many who are not having that much experience or knowledge like you so if you will give them some guidance that is empowerment but if you will think no this is i learned this this is for me i want my own promotions why should i tell this to some other else it will not so the what chief guest has mentioned is that whatsoever you will give like he has mentioned although his main business is for that he is running a academy now running academy means he is charging fees for training but what he says he is welcoming all the youth to get any guidance because he feels if he is guiding somebody and if the person is benefited he is not going to lose anything so that is the only difference between the individual development and the community development is required but it has to be with a social angle also okay i i'm sure that uh, this uh, this is our difference thank you very much uh, mr manjunath for giving your views now i would like to invite my next youth guest and he is mr saket ar mr saket ar is a currently a cfa pursuant at bangalore he is co founder of optionable fintech llb llp yes uh, mr saket uh, you have heard what our chief guest and your earlier panelist has spoken now we would like to know from you the role of youth in youth empowerment mr saket ar please hey, sir uh, first of all i would like to thank you for giving me the opportunity uh, as one of the pa- panelists earlier mentioned uh, so i would like to uh, bring another quote from franklin d roosevelt itself so he rightly mentions that we cannot always build a future for the youth but we can build youth for the futures so i am going to talk about the role of youth in finance industry and how it has changed over the years so like if we see uh, traditionally before maybe if we go one or two decades earlier 
we see the concept of finance was completely different in minds of people so anybody who was working or anybody who had an employment considered investing in stocks as a gamble but now the thing has changed so now they consider a stock as a avenue for wealth building so now no one wants to have their investments in bank so they don't want to make fd or keep their uh, savings bank account running but they want to invest and they want to make their money grow and this perception has changed over the years and i would like to relate this uh, to uh, as a contribution of youth itself because we are seeing many startups and many uh, entrepreneurs eng who are trying to spread financial literacy so we can see uh, after zero da came into existence Uh, so when zero da came into existence the founders were around uh, 27 28 years old and back then the participation of youth in indian stock market was really low and post which zero da was a technologically oriented company and we saw many account openings happen after zero da came into picture and recently after the lockdown over 100 million accounts were opened in india out of which more than around 60 million accounts were of youth that is ranging from 24 to 35 years old so we see a paradigm shift happening from people who are now earning they actually want to have their money invested and they want to make the money grow and it's not just that we are also seeing many startups working on spreading financial literacy and uh, we also recently got a web series uh, scam 1992 post which the financial awareness or the need of investing in stock market has uh, spread all around and we do see that ourselves because after the series we have got many enquiries at optionables where many people were interested to open the accounts and they want to uh, start investing so we definitely see a shift and we believe that it's not just in the field of finance you see any industry uh, let's say we take technology industry many of the innovations came from youth so when you uh, see microsoft or when you see google all those were started when all the founders were at their youth so we believe uh, so i personally and we at our organization believe that so uh, the next generation always wants to live better than the current generation so that's why they will always try to be more innovative they will try to work harder so they get to live better than the previous generation and that's how we improve and that's the reason youth is really, really important in empowering the future okay thank you mr uh, um, saket but uh, you you mentioned about the innovations and uh, all those things can you give me some examples of indian youths about the innovation uh, yes sir so uh, one disruption was in payment system by paytm so even uh, when vijay shekhar sharma was in his youth that's when paytm was started and we see a complete shift from digital payments from cash payments to digital payment so that is uh, one way and then uh, you see many startups coming the flipkart changed the entire uh, way people shop in india from uh, the, that is sachin okay. bansal miss miss mr saket now i would like to stop you here yeah. you know the paytm has uh, copied the system from a uh, other country's uh, leading company Yes, sir. It was so not pay- innovation. It was nothing a new thing which they have started of their own. They have copied the PayPal. Yes, sir. So PayPal so, was also by Elon Musk, who was again a youth. No, I, that's true. That yeah. the thing is, when we are talking of innovation of youth, empowerment of youth in India, we must come out with something new. Yes, we have uh, invented the the our own Indian uh, Mr. Sabir Bhatia invented the Hotmail, but hmm. ultimately it was sold. you have mentioned about flipkart now flipkart is also not uh, with uh, indian company now all right. these things are so the idea of uh, uh, the empowerment is that youths of india should be empowered in such a way that they will be coming out with their unique new ideas following that like uh, we are talking on zoom today hmm. A- any other platform equivalent to zoom we have which has been invented by indians or we you see how many uh, nobel prize our youths or indians have got those who are got getting the nobel prize they might be the indian born but now they are not even more indian because they have taken the citizenship so the difference here is that youth should apply their own mind innovative mind what you are saying is right yes we are changing but we have to work hard we should do research 
how much research is going on in India that we have to see, not the copy paste. We have to apply mind. We have to uh, think what others are thinking, why not we can think. Uh, how to think or what mm. to think, there is a difference. Although new education policies is coming, but the youth, you people have to take a decision. After all, older generation were not having all these facility. No electricity, very uh, electricity, limited electricity, no telephones even at that time. Then uh, telephones came, no mobile phones, no internet, no, no such type of medical facilities. So all these things have come up. You are blessed. And I'm sure the new next generation, next gen of you also means whatsoever your generation, the next generation which is going to come will be more blessed with more tech savvy. But it doesn't mean that you will say True. we are, you are, everyone is innovative. After all, IIT, IIMs were constructed before you. True. That's why you have learned all those things. Now what you people have come out, how many, because um, uh, our chief guest has mentioned about the uh, artificial uh, intelligence, AI. True. How many, how many centers this generation has developed? That is what we want to know. The other day, we were, I, I have a program of uh, reimagining marketing in which uh, one of the panelists mentioned, he, uh, uh, Dr. Joshan, and he, he was talking from Singapore. He's a foreign national. And he mentioned this AI, which is coming now, which is going to be the, the totally game changer. They says uh, in, at the airport, you will not find any inquiry booth. All robots will be sitting and they will be giving all the replies. In hospitals, along with the doctor, right now, initially, otherwise in future, the doctors are not required. You have to go there, the artificial intelligence will check up and will tell you what is the disease and they will give the diagnosis and the medicines. Everything will be done by AI. Then what is going to happen to the youth? It means you ha youth have to be one step ahead of all these technologies, what uh, uh, our chief guest has mentioned about the technology, that technology is not the everything. Yes, you have to be ahead. If you will not ahead, if you will become para parasite of the technology, then the technology will rule. But if you will make the technology to be for your use, then you will all be empowered. That is the reason. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Saket, for me giving you sub, uh, such Thank a you, nice views about the financial things. Yeah. Now I would like to go to our next guest, youth guest and he is Mr. Swain Day. Uh, Mr. Day is, uh, yeah, Mr. Day, he is associated with Indo Gulf Marketing Association and he is right now based at Kolkata. Uh, Mr. Day, you have heard our chief guest, uh, yes. Mr. Rakesh Kumar Jha and you have heard all your earlier panelists. Now we would like to know from you, the role of youth in youth empowerment. Mr. Day, please. Thank you, sir. Uh, very good morning to all. So uh, we have seen that the youths are always full of energy and creativity. And uh, as my earlier colleague said that uh, a huge part of the Indian population consists of these young minds. Imagine the impact they can bring upon the society in the future if they're given the proper direction and uh, the proper guidance. But I feel that there's always something stopping them. People at this age uh, have dreams, but they rarely take shape. Uh, the reasons can be manifold, and I think this creates a need for empowerment. People say that the youth are at the heart of the nation, but the, nobody listens to them, and that is the irony. Sometimes it's the societal norms, sometimes it's their own parents imposing their own decisions on them, and sometimes it's just financial aspects uh, getting in the way. Uh, at this age, they also develop this need for the societal belongingness, like they want to belong um, to the society among their friends and this. Uh, but they are not given this freedom of making decisions, given, they are not given the freedom of making life choices. They are suppressed. All they want to do is just live their dream and, and grow and without any constant pulling them back. So uh, a large part of the Indian youth population uh, lack the financial resources to aid themselves. Like many researchers have uh, proved that the underprivileged youths are more hardworking than the privileged youths. So given them the proper financial support, they can do wonders. Coming to the uh, another important point that I would like to emphasize on today is the empowerment of these young women. 
who come from this from this uh, uh, areas which are uh, below the where they are uh, pretty underprivileged and here the parents like force them to get married at a very young age uh, in spite of their continuous objections these women want to grow and they want to study they want to excel in their lives but uh, in spite of the of, of saying so again and again they are ignored they should be given the right to make their own decisions it's their life so i believe that spreading social awareness and educating the underprivileged is another part of uh, the responsibility of this youth this age group is full of energy and their so impact on the society can be massive all, only if their minds are in the right place all they need is some guidance and maybe in the but that should not be imposed on them it should be in the form of an advice but uh, the the liberty of making decisions should be theirs i businesses across the world have uh, associations which help each other grow the uh, and i think that uh, probably the youths can also form some associations uh, which will probably be the temples of creativity positivity and research uh, these associations can be mentored by people who have excelled in their lives probably even the government can set up some policies uh, to support them help them function uh, in fact finance them for these their new ideas they can work on persisting problems of the society and come up with ideas where which uh, which were not even thought of they can help these young women from uh, from these backward areas to come out of the uh, of the of the barriers that they were facing for so long they can give them a voice to speak so uh, such associations can in fact boost the economy it can give these young minds the opportunity to become entrepreneurs it would help their it would help them transform their dreams into a reality and i think this is one, the major role of the youth in empowerment of the youth thank you thank you mr day for giving your views and you have raised uh, two very important point first point is you says that uh, the social the underprivileged youth uh, the underprivileged society uh, my point is only this why you are depending or the youths are depending on the government or on the older generation when the sati pratha or the child marriage these two were there who has removed those they were youth raja ram mohan roy and all those why there were no association no government government was there it was youth movement if you will start thinking that this is happening today what action the youths are taking today why they are see government has formed a law that no child marriage will take place but still the child marriages are taking place in india they did that even the after the uh, the widows are been burned even still a uh, few instances are there although stopped um, this thing dowry is there why the youth who is taking dowry if who is uh, getting married not the older generation the young generation the dowry is coming in that if youth say no i don't want uh, dowry at all otherwise i will not marry then only the dowry can stop no law can be able to stop so who is responsible the youth is responsible so please don't shift the responsibility of your youth to the older generation older generation has done their work they are expecting so much fine but if you say no i don't want a single penny from on um, my marriage if anybody will say or the girl will say if i if you will pay one rupee in a dowry i will not marry then the change will come you don't require any association you don't require any uh, government support in this youth is this is a called empowerment that is one point and second point you have raised about the uh, about the financial things you wanted that to finance that that again depends on the youth what should only thing is you have to change your mindset you have to work you have you should have the self tell me one thing why the same youth of india who is going abroad they are ready to work everywhere you might be knowing you are dealing with a uh, multinational uh, association uh, where gulf and indo gulf uh, association so you know what is happening uh, 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 around the world so why they, when they are ready to work there on a petrol pump or driving a car cab or uh, working in a restaurant or a pub earning money and they are uh, studying why they cannot start this thing in india then there will be no problem the only problem is because the youth also feel themselves we are privileged 
my father or my mother or my parents are having this position in the society we should not do something although the parents will not like this but youth has to change subhashan was was a youth when he decided to come out and forming form the azad hind fauj he was not guided by uh, seniors or the government or uh, this thing why not you why not this youth take a decision yes we have to do and that is called empowerment thank you very much uh, mr jay for giving your views now i would like to move to the next uh, guest and uh, next guest is mr uh, i will just see whether he is there or not mr no i i can't hai mr when uh, mr sri harsha are you there no uh, he is not there uh, fatima are you there now fatima please unmute and please switch on your video if you are there please switch on your video fatima yes sir i am there actually there is a lot of no so if you as soon as i start my video no. so i Connected. Yeah, because the range, your network is not there. If you still have five minutes, if you can go somewhere else and uh, try to uh, connect yourself, then I can give you a chance again. Because it's a live telecast. Without your uh, uh, video, we cannot uh, take you. Uh, okay, so please try another five minutes. I am now going back to my uh, uh, our uh, chief guest, Mr. Rakesh Kumar Jha. Mr. Rakesh Kumar Jha, you have listened. our the views very good views uh, brilliant views i must say uh, the bubbling views and their uh, energy with full of energy and definitely new ideas what they are saying but one thing is common in among all them they still want some guidance they want someone to guide them although they have ideas they want to do it but they still want Uh, that somebody should guide them uh, they they require the policy makers to make a policy unfortunately in india the policy makers are all belongs to older generation and i again i am repeating this in this show also which i tell every in every show in india the first parliament the youths below 45 years of age were 26% mps and today in this present parliament the it is only 12% who to blame although 65% population of india is below 45 years we are the youngest country in the world so fault lies with you you want to elect because it's a democracy if you want to elect your mp or mla more than 65 or 70 or 80 years old that's you you are the voters not the older generation so uh, don't uh, blame the older generation blame yourself blame means just go inside see yourself uh, introspection is required then only you will be able to empower yourself because if the policy maker is making a policy they are making the policy keeping their views they are a school of thought what they have learned in in their time not that because how i know what is artificial intelligence what is ai i don't know but you people knows so this is only possible if you can change it so what i am saying um, uh, mr uh, jha i am just uh, seeing if uh, she has come back again otherwise i am coming to you uh, fatima if you are there please switch on your uh, video if you have come Uh, switch on your video now um, no fatima we can't see you so anyway so uh, mr uh, jha yes sir. what do you think how this youth they are there they are ready to work they are ready to change they are ready to uh, make our country um, global leader but they require still they require the guidance from their generation older generation whom they say feel that they are curbing their rights they are not allowing them to do the works many times they say what is your view and how the youth can empower your concluding remarks about all these things uh, mr jha take your own time please go ahead yes sir you know 
that after listening all the youth i am very much uh, you know enlightened and very much you know excited to share a lot of things but uh, time is uh, very no no i am also. giving you time because right now uh, this uh, two of the panelists have lost the connection Achha. so you have time so you can speak I, i i will tell you when to stop so you can stop otherwise you are free to speak sir, sir, because sir. we want your guidance for these youth so they will be enlightened more yes sir please. sir 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 so point is that you know that uh, don't ask what the country has done for you yourself you ask yourself that what you have done for the sake of country first thing second thing any action any action without thought is meaningless and you know without thought any action is futile so you, you should have a particular kinds of correlation between the action and thought also and more important thing also that this is a pen i am showing this pen to everyone because i have found of many pens because you know pen is very mightier than any sword i mean to say that if you have a good pen and pen is the tongue of mind you can create a lot of things for the coming generations also and you know as i am seeing that one sayan de sahab he is mr manna day i i can remember him also so bengal is the uh, soil of a lot of you know um, people a lot of great leaders like raja ram mohan rai he started brahm samaj subhash chand bose he started uh, like hind ayad in fall ina in the post so that was a kind of you know it is the role of youth empowerment the bengal was the leading force of against the british almighty rule what was that it was because of their intellect power they had started the things and they paved the way and that's why it was the capital city in up to 1912 bengal kolkata was the capital city i mean to say that it is the youth who can take up the ideas as goels have, have has said that artificial intelligence i have written uh, i have just gone through one book that it is uh, written by one american in this book it is written the cloud computing cloud computing it is also related to a kind of artificial intelligence all the economy will change what does it mean that if our youth are not empowered with the great informations then definitely unemployment will be generated automatically and why in the united states of america or in uk or most of the european countries they are blessed to have their empowerment they are have their own empowerment they have their own kinds of no uh, i mean employment generation but as it is lacking behind if you go to the rural india they all are dependent on the governments government is not doing this government is not doing that but as compared to other countries if you go to canada if you go to other countries they have a lot of kinds of thing even uno has started i mean to so what is the lacking behind that it is the brain child of their all kinds of thing before independence also they were at the driving seat the americans britishers they were at the driving seats particularly the britishers but what is lacking behind that even after getting the independence after the second world war most of the developing countries they were dependent technologically <coughs> and economically on their own and that is why even in today's era even in 21st century all the developing countries are dependent on them particularly on the technology now the economy has totally changed why because from agriculture to the industrial and after this industrial it has been the taken shape with the it sector so you should have to concentrate on all these things and particularly i have to also say that don't ask the problems because we all are humans we have a lot of problems we have a lot of dimensions psychological problem as fatima was saying yes definitely that is there every society either it is in our society or the in the western society they have the problems they have a lot of problems i mean to say once again i want to motivate all the youth do not count the problems every morning you pray to the god that hey god why you have created for me what is the best inside me and read the good personalities life i mean to say the people who have reached up to the level abraham lincoln mahatma gandhi dr kalam barack obama you have to read those things that in, in spite of the problems constant how they became at the top and today's youth are very impatient i have to say that okay you have five problems you have 10 solutions today's youths are to become a star over a night 
you have to change your role model who are your role model i don't watch any i mean politics and the glamour world just stop watching them because this is not the role model i mean to say that you have to create your own role model if you want to become that okay if you want, want to become something kalam had not become the president over a day over a night rome was not built in a day so he had given 60 years up to that level i mean to say that you have to give the time and for creating any space in this world you have to give 10 years 20 years you have to be impatient or patient so that you can attain that success i was studying somewhere regarding the us ex us president barack obama it was his grandfather he started thinking about his life he just started and linking all these things and he went to us and became the top most you know post i mean to say this is what youth has to also understand nothing can be achievable within a day so you have to just list the best thing inside you that the five or four things are the best thing that i can uh, i can do for the and empowerment means don't ask that you have uh, achieved something you have become x y z then there is no worth of anything everyone is running after his life and then what is the role of any society what is the role of values in the united states of america the technocrats are being given the giving please is a concept go well, sir giving please suppose anyone comes to our house i mean to say any any down trodden person we give some offer sweets we give some money to them we give some arms to them why because it is a giving please so giving please should not be taken as i mean that you should have a kinds of emotion the emotions means what that oh what is happening with our fellow citizen oh what is happening with our nation oh what is happening why we cannot create the ignition comes from the need and from the passion from the things that okay in our society a lot of problems are happening we can do these things i am citing one example one mr nurani is there mr nurani was a very simple humble person he was refused by a doctor that since this this door is closed i am running after my time i cannot treat your i mean son he has started he taken the vow and oath and now right now he is a non medical professional and running seven hospitals across the india this is what a kinds of ignition when i came to uh, this De delhi i did not have a lot of understanding of the world but i started I started learning every day i am learning from goel sahab also that oh my god how much energy he is having every day 10:30 he starts rather 10 10:15 i was discussing to one of my friends that he is such a i mean you have to learn from goel sahab that goel sahab is doing tremendous job he is inviting a lot of people across from different background so this is a kind of motivation this is a kind of ignition that all the time he is putting up behind and all these things so this is the thing and okay. do not blame anything do not blame dear friends don't blame it is you to take the good things remember good memories of your life the last 10 years the light, uh, last 5 years don't count the problems 1 2 3 4 5 no shastri had become the prime minister of india how kalam how obama how steve jobs how swami vivekanand how swami vivekanand fell there and he was not having food he was uh, he was begging uh, please give me some food and then, then he started talking their sisters and brothers what is this so please count the good things inside you that hey god give me good things and i want to do first of my as manjunathan uh, saying yes definitely manjunathan first of all we have to empower if i am not empowered if i am not developed if i am not skilled i cannot do anything but definitely 10% charity we must do it is written also in our all religious holy whether it is quran whether it oh. is you know, gita and everywhere mr jha please be brief now <laughs> yeah. so patiently and very you know emotionally i am saying life is a very limited sir life is very limited and we have three dimensions that the childhood younghood and oldhood that is the very simple terms and now it is the time the youth come forward the, for the things as mr goel have said, said a lot of things i am very much thankful to all the panelists manjunathan ji especially sayan de and uh, mr abel job he is 
uh, also very has say a lot of things and uh, gracious disoja all people are feeling and one more request before winding up the things that please start a kinds of uh, a kinds of like group a kinds of things to the whether it is whatsapp or any kinds of group so that we can exchange the ideas any things in the future and once again thank you very much but before winding up one slogan i have to say that one thing that you love the things what is your passion you will be definitely at the top and one thing before winding up that jag mein jab tu aaya tha jag mein jab tu aaya tha jag hasa tha tu basar kar apni aisi zindagi tu basar kar apni aisi zindagi jag roye tu hasta ja this is the from core of my heart that jab kalam sahab ka death hua to he was delivering a speech in north east one state this is what whatever you love anything you love you do the work and every obstacle will go out thank you very much all the best thank, thank and for all of you thank you very much thank you very much thank you very much uh, mr jha once again your motivational thoughts i will must say now i think i we can see fatima there fatima muskan please unmute yourself and continue your uh, talk now we have two three It's three minutes left only. Please. Okay, so I was talking about the psychological aspects of youth empowerment. So for me, I think that this generation it has a lot of problems. It has a lot of mental problems to be precise. People are depressed. People are lonely. People don't want to mingle with people. But yeah, we are totally active on social media. So that's something we hide ourselves with. So for me, uh, what I see around in India is that mental health is not. Uh, given a good status it still has a lot of stigma around it so first of all we need to clear it we need to be uh, uh, we we have to make it clear that yes if we have a problem if we have some mental problem we can discuss it with people we need counselors we need clinicians we need a lot of people who can help us go through it so as i said in the beginning uh, the suicide rate in india is 17.70% uh, of the whole uh, world so uh, we see that a lot of youth the age gap uh, age from 15 to 35 are the ones who are committing suicide a lot in india why are they committing suicide it's either unemployment it's illiteracy uh, it's most of the time mental problems and they think that okay i can't solve this problem so i have to give up on my life prior it did not happen because then we had joint families we had people around us who would take care of us who would talk to us and we would open up with them but now we live in a nuclear family where our parents go out to work and we are here sitting alone and we feel like maybe we should we should keep it to ourselves we should not talk to others and this is where the problem arises we stop talking we stop we start disconnecting to people so that's why i want i want to uh, through this platform i want to ask people to talk a lot please ex uh, express your problem it's not a stigma it you're not weak if you have a mental problem please do talk to people and after this i want to cite some examples on how youth are getting empowered so in the beginning uh, mr rajesh just said that please, uh, youth are brief. using a lot of social media but which which should be used be brief yeah yeah sir sure just three examples very short yeah. examples okay Okay, uh, so uh, Rakesh just said that, that uh, social media is being used a lot by the youth, so they are not being empowered. But it should be used in an advantageous way. Yeah, people are solving their own legs. We should not depend on our family. We should not depend on our older ones to uh, be empowered. We should do it ourselves. So before that, I'll end with a one example. I heard a woman uh, named Sanjana Budi. Uh, she was talking about how she helped the Indians while she was staying in New Jersey. So she came to India once and visited schools, and she saw that they didn't have, did not have books, enough books to write to study. So then she went to New Jersey. She found an organization known as Pure Youth, and all the youngsters they came up and they went on asking for donations for people in India. So you can see that even after not staying in India, she is doing something for the people of India. She was a citizen of India, so she tried doing so. With her example, she has helped a lot of people. A lot of dining halls has been made, canteens have been made, libraries. Like sir asked, we need to learn, uh, study a lot. We need to read a lot of books. Yes, even that was established. Okay, so, thank, yeah. thank, thank you, thank you very That's much, Miss Tima Muskan, for giving your views. So today you have seen how the youth are so vibrant. they full of ideas and they are ready to do the youth development they are doing it but they require some guidance we the civil society must come forward give them proper guidance see to it that youth should not be misguided and they should be guided properly if we just give some guidance to them definitely indian youth can also show what they are 
quoting right now the other youths of the other countries tomorrow the other country you should quote our youths ki the indian youths have done so much things for us thank you very much for giving your views and today's program which has been live telecasted by v4 news global tv v4 stream malnadu tv news gaon se samvad saroka news as well as was shown live on facebook and youtube and our endeavor is to bring to you every day a new and current topic and tomorrow media conference with lal goel at 10:30 am the topic is uh, topic tomorrow is uh, just a minute i will tell you the topic the topic is labor problems and solutions and our guests are mr s bhumrao chairman contract labor welfare advisory board government of india mr prem chand p management consultant kochi mr deepak vishnathan consultant habitat for humanity international and tcis mumbai and mr anil kumar ji managing director action rich business solutions india private limited as well as his executive director of bni so please tune in tomorrow uh, at uh, for media conference with lal goel at 10:30 am thank you very much mr rakesh kumar jha being the chief guest and giving your motivational views and thank you all our youth uh, youth leaders i must say in uh, your field please keep it up you are the future you are the present you are the you are not the past but present and future and i am sure if you are there we need not to worry but yes civil society we all the elder generation should come forward and give help to you thank you very much